Now let's explore the element of space. White space is nothing. White space is the absence of content. White space doesn't hold content in the way a photograph or text holds meaning, and yet it gives meaning through context in, to both images and text. In fact, white space can make or break the effective transmission of an image and text. In material terms, what is white space in graphic design? Well, white space is extravagance. White space is the surface of the paper on which you are printing, showing through, and on which you are choosing not to print. If economy and conservation were your chief concern, then white space would be at a minimum. Obviously, you would use it all up. In any presentation, the inclusion of white space will aid in making the piece communicate more effectively. It allows space for the eye to rest. It allows room for elements to breathe having space for things just to be. Space is often referred to as white space. Well, it doesn't have to be white. It can be blue, yellow, or even pink. White space is really referring to a place for the eyes to rest, for the design to breathe, for elbow room. It helps in relieving tension. When designing a layout, you need to consider not only where you'll place each line and shape, but also where, where they'll be relative to each other. You must think about how much space you want around and between each element. It's similar to arranging furniture. You have to consider how much space you have. Like, can I get everything in here and still leave room for people to walk around? You have to think about how the type and images will work together. Back to my furniture example, you'd be thinking, should uh, the couch face the window or the fireplace? And finally, you have to consider how it all looks. Does this high boy table look weird next to the low couch? You have to make the decisions in design just like you would in your living room. White space, the absence of text and graphics, is vital to graphic design. Even when you have a lot of elements in a piece, you still must have some blank areas free of images and text. You must have white space. The white space is just as important as the other elements you'll use. The open space provides rest for the eye and visually organizes what's on the page. The key is to just add enough white space so the eye knows where to go and where it can rest for a bit when it gets there. The white space between columns of type on the pages of books provides boundaries and helps the reader move easily through the text. You can control white space in the following locations. Margins, paragraphs, spacing, space between lines of text, gutters, which is the space between columns, or space surrounding text and graphics. The placement and the value of the shapes on the page create spatial relationships and focal points, which are centers of interest. If you surround a big word with a lot of white space, the reader's eye will be drawn directly to that word, even if there's lots of other words in other places on the page. It's easy to name um, the types of publications where white space is not a first priority. Most paperback books, for instance, where the presentation of text is mostly functional, economical, and the readable or the readability is the first priority. White space has minor importance here. Historically, newspapers have um, not been too big on white space, although this seems to be changing as newspapers are slowly shifting their function and providing color and entertainment as well as hardcore information. In our postmodern times, there's been an increasing competition for the eye in all sorts of media, so sales are prompted not through content, but through quick visual summaries made using the visual code in which the white space plays a dominant part. Let's look at um, some publications that use white space. If we take, for instance, the you know woman's magazine of Vogue, in most instances on the interior portion of the magazine articles and photo spreads there's they use lots of white space even the advertising is simplified it's highly visual and most of it contains plenty of white space it's interesting how in our culture there seems to be an implication that white space in advertising identifies high class or expense think of uh, ad campaigns and media that use the most white space it's almost as if the luxury of space is something that 
in Western cultures anyways, we have equated with high class exclusiveness and expense. Remember that space separates or unifies. It highlights and it gives the eye a visual rest. Space can be used to first and foremost give the eye a visual rest. So leave plenty of white space on a spread that is otherwise filled with lots of copy. It can create ties between elements. You want to put less space between elements to make them look related and more space between elements that are not related. It can form positive and negative shapes. It'll give your layout a three-dimensional quality. An element that is overlapped by another looks, at, looks as if it's farther back. You can highlight an element. If you put a lot of white space around something important, it will call attention to it. You can make a layout easy to follow. If you put ample margins around a piece, it'll make it more readable and legible. You can make type as legible as possible allowing comfortable spacing between letters, words, and lines of type. You can create tension between two elements by placing two photos so they're almost touching each other and playing with space that way. And you can make a page dynamic. If you have unequal spacing between elements, this will make it seem more dynamic. Let's go ahead and deconstruct a couple of ads and talk about them. The first one that I want to talk about is for Reach Dental Floss and this poster right here very cleverly and effectively creates negative shapes with space to deliver its message about dental floss. The shape of the teeth are basically made by the negative space of the chicken's body. The tagline in the message is very small and inconspicu inconspicuously placed along the underside of the chicken and the words follow the curve of the body the chicken's body. This placement and sizing help to support the ad's overall message. The tagline reads, your teeth can hide many things. Um, in addition to the generous use of space, it creates not only the teeth, but it focuses the viewer's attention to the tagline and the company brand, which is also pretty small compared to the rest of the ad. Because of the space, these items can be small, but they still command the necessary attention. It's kind of a fun ad, and they have a whole series. I think they have one with a cow and a pig in there, too. They're kind of cute. The next one that we're going to look at is for Sony headphones. This ad um, definitely has a striking dimensional quality to it. The large note in the center is shooting off thousands of small notes, and they appear to pretty much leap into the viewer's space. This effect is enhanced by the three-dimensional quality of the note itself and by all the space that the note commands and has. The dimensional quality is further enhanced by the tiny little notes that are bursting from the large one. The main elephant element is framed within the white space and the minimal use of copy further helps to keep the ad clean and free of any other distractions. The logo and the simple line art drawing of the headphones which almost act as like a product shot. They use neutral color and they're kept small and simple so that the viewer can focus uninhibited on the main image. Both these elements have plenty of space and the overall effect of the ad is that it's well balanced and easily leads the viewer's eyes through the ad. This ad right here is for Scotch Bright um, sponges and this ad is very fun on many levels. The ad was used right around the time that the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith was released. So um, these silhouettes of the sponge people are basically cutouts and they're meant to mimic the characters from the movie. If you actually compared their stance to a movie poster, this is the exact same stance they have. And if you look closely, um, you know, how they're holding their guns and where they are is exactly how the characters of the movies are standing in some of the advertisements for the movie poster. Um, it's especially apparent by the guns and the stances against each other. Their position and stance directly mimic one of the ads for the movie, as I just mentioned. The advertising campaign, Rough to Clean, Soft to Dry, uses a play on the movie uh, characters as well. And there's plenty of white space to make the viewer focus on the main portion of the ad. Space is used to bring the focus to the first to the characters and then to the taglines, and finally down here to the logo. Minimal use of extra text and plenty of space help to draw the user in and focus their attention. And the last 
ad we're going to look at is the uh, an ad for Apple iPod and Apple has always had amazing ad campaigns one of their signature styles is plenty of white space in this particular silhouette series of ads for the iPod they use minimal color and it's a highly suggestive uh, silhouette and it's very simple and a pr um, very simple kind of line art drawing of their product it's uh, but it's definitely recognizable the headphones are always apparent and they're always white and they're usually is the shape of an iPod that's there as well just to get the point across the ads are super powerful and eye-catching the style has been widely imitated and has been a huge success all of the ads are unified by a distinctive consistent style this ad campaign has been so successful that the iPod silhouette is known all over the world and it doesn't even have to have a name on the ad anymore or a clear visual of the product shot just having the black silhouette dancing across the screen seems to be enough the public still knows that it belongs to the always innovative Apple the marketing strat strategy that took on a life form of its own and now the iPod silhouette is an icon of its um, of itself basically just like the device that it was meant to market the iPod when Apple was posed to to market it they needed an advertising that would stay in the minds of their customers they wanted to use something that represented the coolness of the iPod and something that would change the face of advertising just as readily as the iPod could change the face of the music industry and the iPod was certainly a revolutionary product and the advertising had to be revolutionary as well so this is a great use of space in the addition to shape, line, contrast, unity. It all makes for an eye-catching, memorable advertisement.